Hey guys, so I'm just going to do a super quick, hopefully quick, tutorial on um, how to use the Graphs Hopper script that I provided for um, importing contours and making a surface and adding the buildings to your site model. Um, I have a like 35 minute long video also up on YouTube on Stephanie's channel um, going through the script if you want to build it from scratch, but if you are too tired for that, I completely understand. So let's just do it quickly with the script that I provided. So the first thing we need to do is open up Rhino, so you can go ahead and do that. And my units are in meters, but if you wanted to change them now, you can do that now by entering units and changing them to meters. From Rhino, you're going to type in grasshopper. And it's going to pull up a second window um, because grasshopper is an extension of Rhino. So from here, it's in my recent files, but I'll just show you how to open up a file from grasshopper. So you're going to go to file and open document. And you're just going to navigate to the place that you've saved my script. It's also um, available to download on the description of the long 35 minute video. And it's also going to be on Moreau. So you can just um, check the uh, grasshopper file and click open. Okay, so I've provided all of these orange notes um, so that when you're doing this yourself, you have a little bit of information as to what to do. So you don't have to keep watching this tutorial over and over, but let's just go through it um, step by step. So the first thing you're gonna do is navigate to your browser and open up the City of Vancouver Open Data Portal, which is opendata.vancouver.ca. And we're gonna search for two different data sets. The first is gonna be the contours and the second is gonna be the building. So let's go to the contours. And here you can decide um, what interval your contours um, you'd like them to be. I'm gonna go with one meter intervals. And you're gonna to go to your map and export a, um, a site that you're um, using for studio. So as you can see, there are all these contours. I'm just gonna pick a random site for the purpose of this. You can just pick a square. Um, I would probably take a um, screenshot at this point so that you remember where to take your selection the next time we export data so that um, you don't mess up like I did in the last video. And then you're going to go to export and you're going to make sure that you change the coordinate system to EPSG. This is really important not to forget this. You will know if you forgot it because your layers will be all in different places. So you're going to download a shape file. And you're going to download only the 46 selected records or whatever number um, is basically just how many contours you have in that little selection. And you're just going to click on that and let it download. So once it's downloaded, you can open up your downloads folder. And um, you're going to right click on your folder and go to the properties and just make sure you unblock it and press apply and OK. And you're going to want to extract the folder. And we can do that for the buildings as well. Might as well do it right now. So you're going to go back to just click on the open data portal and search buildings. Actually, you're going to want to go back and search building footprints. And the most recent one they have is 2009. So that's what we'll have to go with. And here is where you want to <laughs> see. I did not take a screenshot, so I don't remember where my selection is because I'm can't take my own advice. So let's just do a little bit more than we have to and go like, I think it's somewhere around here. And export again, changing it to EPSG and downloading only the 356 selected records. Okay, and then we can do the same thing and unblock this folder and extract. So once your files are downloaded, you can also download like plenty of other data, but we're going to stick with this for now. Um, I can help you guys out if you want to layer more data as well. Um, so then you're going to go over to your grasshopper script. And the first I've grouped these um, so that you know kind of like what we're dealing with. So this first group is for contours and this second group is for buildings and they have different groups inside of them. So 
we're going to read the contour shape file first. So you're going to right click on your file path here. So right click and set one existing file. And it's going to pull up your folder so you can go to your downloads or wherever you've saved your um, unzipped folders and go to the contour lines. And you're going to look for the one that's .shp for shapefile and press open. It might take a second. Okay, and then to see where this is in your file, you can just go to the end here and click the scroll wheel on your mouse and go to zoom. Oh, and there's already buildings on here, I guess, from the file that I provided. So don't worry about that. We'll change the file. We're just going to actually preview these off so that we can see what we're doing here. So I've just um, clicked the middle scroll wheel and turned the preview off. And you're going to do that for both these two things that are outlined in green. So we can deal with our contours first. So I'm going to actually go to the top view. We're going to quickly make a surface out of these. So I'm going to go back actually to the other thing highlighted in green, which is this move command and do that same zoom thing again in the top view. So I'm going to make a line work layer in Rhino. And I'm going to make a sub layer called one meter contours. I'm just going to drag this into the line work layer. So it's a sub layer. And I'm going to go back to Grasshopper and right click on my move geometry component and go to bake. And then I'm going to select the one meter contour layer and press OK. So that's baking the geometry into Rhino so that you can actually manipulate it. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and turn this component and preview it off. So then we're going to use these um, contours to make a surface. Okay, so this is another point at which you want to reference your screenshot so you can kind of figure out where you need to trim everything off from. I'm pretty sure it's going to be somewhere in here. So I'm just going to make a box and make a square around this area. I don't actually know if this is the right area, but you should know <laughs> um, because you have a screenshot, which I don't. And I'm just going to put this box on a bounding box layer. And I'm going to put that into line work as well. Just select my box, right click on the bounding box layer and change object layer. And then I'm going to use this box to trim off the excess. So I'm going to type TR for trim. The cutting object is my bounding box. And then you can just go ahead and select away the excess. OK, and then I'm going to make a 3D layer for my surface that I'm going to make. And make a 3D ground surface layer. And put that into there. And let's just make this a little smaller. So this is um, the active layer. So that's perfect. We're going to type patch and select all of this and press OK. And you can use something a little bit higher than I have. I'll do 50 and keep this at, let's say, 3 and press OK. You can also preview it and play around with it and see what looks best. but the longer, um, the higher UV you put, the slower it's going to be to load. So I'll come back when this loads. Okay, now our surface is patched. So I'm going to switch over to perspective now and take a look at it. And I'm going to switch this to shaded. So that will do. And then I'm going to make this into like a nice little box. So I'm going to select my surface and do extrude surface as RF. And just we do that. And then I'm going to go into my front view and draw a line, L for line, just like this. Use TR for trim, my uh, cutting objects, my line. And then I'm going to just select the objects to trim is this surface. And I can delete this line now. And I'm going to go back into perspective, select my box, and type cap. We have a little box here. So the next thing we're going to do is add our buildings. We're going to navigate to this second half of the Grasshopper script and um, right click on File Path and set one existing file. We're going to go back to our downloads and navigate to our building footprints, shape file. 
And now I turned off the preview for this component at the end. So we're going to go back and turn that on so we can see. OK, so I wasn't too um, accurate with my selections, but yours will fill up this portion. So once we bake it, I'll just delete these and pretend that these buildings are all over my surface. Um, this is why you need a screenshot again. But um, as you can see, they've the script extrudes the buildings to their accurate height and also places them on the accurate level um, relatively according to the base elevation that's listed in the city of Vancouver data. So to bake these into Rhino, we're going to add a new layer called 3D buildings and move that into our 3D and make this active. We don't actually have to make it active. We can bake it onto any layer. And we're going to uh, click on this outlined in green and right click and go to bake and select our 3D buildings layer and press OK. And you can also bake out just the outlines of these buildings without the 3D um, information if you want to do that as well. I would recommend doing that just in case. So we're going to make a new sublayer just in our line work called Building Footprints. And you can go to this um, component that's outlined in green with the move and go to Bake. And we're going to bake this onto our Building's Footprints layer. Okay, so that's all that you need to do with Grasshopper. Everything else from here is in Rhino, so you can actually go in and delete these now. Um, the reason that I can't select this is because this is actually still previewed on in Rhino, so let's preview this off by clicking the scroll wheel and going to this blindfolded man. And from here, we can just edit our stuff and take our section cuts. Um, you would probably want to save this, but everything now is baked into Rhino, so you don't need to have Grasshopper open anymore. You can close this after it's saved and just work in Rhino, but um, just make sure you save both files. And you can always bring this up and change out your um, files if you realize that you did something like this and your building selection is way off and your um, contours are on a different area. You can just take a new selection, download it again, go through the same thing and just re-select um, one existing file just to update them. So you can keep using this um, and then you can just kind of delete the information here and rebake it and you should be good to go.